Hi, Stephen. Um, well, fine wine is a, a physical asset, first and foremost. So it's uh, a hedge against inflation. It's a store of value. And in uncertain times that like we've seen in 2020 with this horrible pandemic, um, it sort of um, helps to secure against market volatility. I mean, it's also capital, uh, capital gains tax free. Um, the underlying indices, the, the market, which we call the Live X100, has risen substantially over the last 20 years. So it's a, an asset group that I think deserves a lot more attention. But is it a gamble? For example, buying en primeur. And for people who don't know, en primeur is uh, buying wine before it's bottled and released on the market. I is that the way to make money? A bit of both. So um, sometimes you'll go into the secondary market and buy wines which have been in circulation for a couple of years. A, a, a portion of what we do is en primeur, where you buy wine, as you say, in barrel. Um, that has um, historically been a good way of investing in wine. You would traditionally, as you would know, probably buy two cases and the value, the growth of, of both cases would mean you could sell one and that would pay for you and enable you, enable you to drink the second. Um, the thing about en primeur is that the gains for the, for the buyer have, uh, have reduced over the last five years, certainly over the last 10 years. Um, but what the pandemic did was meant that with all these stocks in Bordeaux of the 2019 vintage, which was the, which was the most recent, um, the Bordelais thought, well, people's, people haven't got that much cash this year. They reduced um, the, the prices of their wines, which meant that actually got a really great vintage at a, at a far re reduced cost. Um, so for investors, that particular campaign, most recently, 2019 in Bordeaux, was a boon. Does it follow, Don, that a, a good wine to drink would also sell well on the secondary market? There are caveats, but generally, yes. I mean, what we tend to do in is look at the, the very best wines, critically acclaimed wines, from the best years, from the best producers. Um, whether it's vintage Champagne or it's Bordeaux or it's Burgundy, um, there's an inherent um, quality with some of the best wines, and um, that's where the market follows. So how would you go about creating an investment portfolio in wine? Well, you find, find a fine wine broker, and what they should be able to do is put together a, a portfolio that's, that's diverse, most importantly, not just Bordeaux, but perhaps wines, vintage Champagne, or wines from the Rhone, or Burgundy, or American wines, perhaps. Um, but you're looking for a portfolio that is robust. So it's diverse, but it's robust. Um, and then it's over over to the broker to put that together for you. I mean, you, you never see your wines. Um, you can go and visit them in a bonded warehouse. Um, but they're, they're one of the big things about fine wine investment is that the, the wines remain uh, remain in bond. Um, that means you don't pay UK government's duty or VAT on the wine. And that's a big part of it. Um, white fine wine is also, you know, as I said before, capital gains tax free, which is a quite a big um, plus point for investors. It's, it's classed as a wasting chattel, like a like a racehorse. Are there particular wines that are uh, sought after by investors? Yes, there are. There are. I mean, the, the first gross of Bordeaux, wines like, you know, Chateau Lafitte, Rothschild, which is particularly um, popular in China and in the Far East. Um, wines, other, other first growths like Aubryon and Mouton Rothschild. But more recently, wines, Champagnes are, are particular, particular favourites. Things like Salon, Krug, uh, Moët Chandon, Cristal. Uh, and some of the top burgundies as well. So there is, there is certainly a pyramid where the top wines are more sought after. And, and this, there's something called um, inverse supply, which drives fine wine. Essentially, as, as anyone knows, you know, each producer only makes a certain number of bottles every year of each wine. And over time, as you drink those bottles, they're broken or damaged. Um, there's only a finite amount of supply of that, of that wine left that diminishes. And of course, over time, um, wine is one of the few assets that improves with age. Of course, what every investor is looking for is value, is looking to make more money. And I can see in the past 30-odd years, the wine market has changed enormously. The market, I estimate, hit the buffers about a decade ago. But what kind of returns are you looking at in 2021? Um, what, what kind of, and what kind of time scale should you allow for getting a return on your money? I would say that fine wine is, is certainly a medium to long-term investment. So it's not something you would you flip and, and, and return in, in, say, half a year or a year. Um, that being said, I mean, it would be, we would expect single, strong single-digit returns on an annualised basis. Um, but, you know, higher risk, shorter-term strategies um, tend to yield, you know, results per annum of in the 20s to 30s. So it really does, um, might sound like a bit of a cop-out of an answer, but it does depend hugely on what the makeup of your portfolio is. But certainly, you know, for example, over the last, I think, um, the fine wine index has grown by 10.9% over the last 19 years. 
you know, the fine, the, the vintage champagne index, the sub-index of, of the market, has um, risen by about 9% per annum over the last 16 years. So there's strong and more importantly, consistent growth. Um, fine wine is less volatile than, than other markets. Ultimately, wine is a, is a, is a, is a beautiful art form. Um, and so it's nice to be able to sink some of those profits back into drinking the stuff you, you invest in, which is quite nice. Dominic Brennan, a director at Noble Rot, many thanks for joining us on the agenda. Pleasure. Thank you, Stephen.